Hi, let's have a look at this Microsoft Power Automate Community Thread. So the title is Update Record on Dataverse Tables Based on Another Table. So here there are two tables. One is a master employee table which contains a unique employee ID number. And there's a second table which is monthly um, with the employees, reported monthly with the employees uh, that are active in the department. So the plan is to update uh, the latest uh, details from the monthly uh, table, monthly employee details to the master table. Okay, so for this, I have created a small model driven app and this is my master employee. As you can see here, there are name and um, employee number and salary. And the second one I called as monthly employee reports. That's my second dataverse table. It's similar fields except there is a, uh, you know, it's, uh, the salaries are different here. So the plan is under the monthly table, I want to update the salaries. If the record already exists, which uh, I'm going to look up against the employee number, which is a unique ID number, I'm going to update the salary into the master table, okay, here. And if the employee not exists, like the second record, this is not in my, uh, my master record, that means it should create it, okay. So for this demonstration purpose, I'm going to use a manual uh, trigger. And the next thing I can use here is the Microsoft Dataverse, list rows, and uh, select the table. So that is uh, monthly employee reports. So here I'm going to get all the records. And also if you have more than 5,000 records, then there is a limit here. Uh, that means you need to implement uh, uh, the getting more than one records by applying the pagination one. There are lots of blogs out there you can uh, you know find in the community about how to paginate more than 5,000 records. If you got, uh, you know, 5,000 records, this should be all right to work, okay? Otherwise, you need to put uh, the raw count and uh, skip token and all that. Right, okay, so that's monthly um, employee records. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a combos here and uh, map the employee number. Okay, that's mapped. So that's the employee number. So this means I am reading all the records and I got my employee number here. The next thing I can do here is, I'm going to go and add inside this loop, because why it, why this is a loop means it has got more than one records. That, that's the reason you got an apply to each loop here, okay? So inside the loop, I'm going to add my second uh, table. Again, that's going to be a list of records. And uh, here I'm going to look for my employee employees here and going to have match up the filter so the filter i'm going to use here is the my schema name i need to use here to filter it okay so there, there are different ways you can do this to find the schema name the one way to find here is you can um, add an action here and um, i'll just ignore that i'll show you another way so if we, if i go back to here and um, Go to the model driven app. Yeah. I'm looking for the search. Oh, I can't see the, the advanced to find. Ah, okay, so that's a new way of looking at it. I was looking at the old um, classic uh, one that's been changed now. Okay, so here I can look at um, the employee table. So click on the employee one and um, click on the search and search uh, using table using the advanced filters. And here select the employees. Okay, I got the employees. And here I need to add another row and uh, the employee number I'm after here. That's employee number. Uh, just put 100 or something and say apply it. Validation errors. No, 
okay um, okay please ignore that now i'm going to click the download fetch checksum oh even i can't do that either so let me try that again download okay that's downloaded that's all i want here so let me open that record so once you download and open the record in a notepad this is what you're going to get uh, let me open that in a notepad so that's what you're going to get and i can see here my schema name is called ajb underscore employee number see that that's where you can find the schema numbers so let's go back here and that's my master table and under the filter rows the expression so ajb underscore employee number is equal to okay and that's a string so i'm going to put to um if it's a numeric you don't need to do that and that employee number so mine it's a string value and mapping that coming from uh, here this employee number so you can there are two options here one you can either map directly from the combos output or you could um, you could uh, search here the employee number that is coming from the list rows of the previous step this first step remember and that's what i mapped here as employee number so you could either use like directly like this as well okay so then the next thing here we what we could do here is um, we need an if condition so what the if condition going to do is we need to make sure that record exists or not that's the reason we need an if condition here okay okay so we need to find that record exists or not where we are matching with the employee number um from the um, from the uh, the second table so from the second table it is going to match up with the from the master one sorry um, matching matching against the master one yeah so here i'm going to put a condition here the condition i'm going to do is the value uh, of the body uh, count is equal to zero means uh, you know there are no records so uh, to find that what i generally do is i put compose here first okay and like compose and select the list rows value here see that and look the peak code so that you will see the exact index what you want here see that's what you want here you want uh, the output of this values just copy that the only the highlighted part i don't want that sign remember and i don't want the double course also only the highlighted part i want okay yeah now i can uh, remove this now go under the if condition place your cursor here and, and click on the expression and say length two brackets and then paste uh, the one which i copied earlier so basically that's an expression checking how many records are returned it should be only one then so that means is equal to one that means there is an existing record there you know and then for that what what we could do now here is we could say hey go and uh, update the record so here i can use now update update a row then and the update row is the master table again here so that is our employee employees then employees is the master one and see the id row id so the id is coming from the list rows two table that's id okay of this record so that's id we want to update it back here so that means we need to go back here and to look for the list row list rows uh, two and to type id there you should be able to generally see that so if you uh, scroll down you see see employee unique identifier of the entity instances and that is coming from the apply to each loop again uh, from the list rows two okay so why it's put the apply to each again we are filtering uh, you know by list rows two so that means uh, power automate is going to automatically put an apply to each loop here we know it's always going to be one record so we should be all right then here okay then what we want here is we want to map everything coming from the second table which is which is our uh, the the list rows table here the second table that's what we want to map everything into here for the update so for that i'm going to do here like i'm going to leave the name i don't want to update that i don't want to update the employee number again so all i'm all i'm all i want to update here is the uh, salary here okay so search for the salary so you'll see two salaries here remember the first one we want the first one is the list rows 
that is the monthly employer record my second table okay that's the salary I want to update so map that field that's that if you, you can you know you can again map uh, the name and employee number coming from uh, the second table if you want uh, so uh, you know I could use like something like this then like a name again I'm choosing the you know that one the first one okay and again the employee number I could again say here employee number and that is also coming from the first table uh, the first table is the employee number okay I mean the first table in the sense the monthly employer employee reports that's the one my second table in theory yeah my first uh, my master table is the employee one okay employees so that's the way you you know we we can do the updates and the next one is um, if the length is uh, you know is um, one means there is a record there if it not one means uh, you know that means we are going to create it so again i'm going to select the microsoft dataverse record and say add a new row that means the record is not there so again i need to select employees okay and uh, it's the same exercise uh, we need to map the name so here as coming from the very first list rows that's the name i want and now i want the employee um, um, unique instance uh, that we can leave it because the id is going to create automatically and the employee number here so again the employee number so that's uh, coming from the first list rows that's that and the salary also so search for salary and they look for the list of rows that's the salary then okay so i think we done the flow now let's uh, you know run this and see it's going to work or not Okay, looks like the flow is running. Right, the flow ran successfully. You can see there are two records coming from my monthly employee reports table. And uh, then, uh, you know, this is the first record. It looks like it's looking the record and it says, is the record exist? Yes, the record was there, the first one. And if I look for the next record, that is two of two. And which is, you can see the filter here that is filtering against 210. And that is false that means i should execute the add a new row no add a new row new record okay so let's go back here and uh, see the monthly employees so there are two records here we should expect to see the salary should be updated against david smith and enc record it should be created in the employees so here we go so enc records created and uh, the david smith one updated the salary to 100 uh, 000. so this is the way you know you can um, um, read from one table and uh, update the other table there okay so here i talked about manual trigger so there is another way also you could do it it's almost the same syntax i'm not going to cover everything here i'll, I'll put some um, endpoints here so if you want you could use this way you could say like uh, when a row is added and then choose the change type so i'm going to say whenever a new record is created under the monthly employee records reports and uh, i'm going to choose organization as the scope so that means whenever a new record is created that means then you don't need this you know you don't need this list of rows anymore all you do then is the logic to convert that into move this one this the list of rows this logic here and the filtering against employee number coming from this trigger that means it's always going to one record only you know when the new record is added it's going to look against this employee record and extend the same logic like the if condition and all you know that's what you need so you don't need an apply to each like this here and uh, you can remove this list of rows also so that's another way of doing this hope this is useful thank you for watching